Hi everybody, Mr. Lee here. In this video, I'm going to go over a couple more kinematics problems. Uh, and towards the end of the video, I'm going to focus on objects that fall to the ground. Uh, this is the kinematics problems in the Y direction. Alright, so let's get started. We have, I'm a hurrying is approaching a stoplight moving with a velocity of 30 meters per second. I'm going to highlight that. Remember, any time that you're given uh, numbers with uh, units, that's usually a good indication that it's important information. The light turns yellow and Ima applies the brakes and skids to a stop. Now, <clears throat> whenever you see anything coming to a stop, uh, that is very relevant information. It's not information where it's like, uh, where a number is given to you, but we know that if you come to a stop or if you start from rest, uh, your velocity is zero. If Ima's acceleration is negative eight meters per second squared, then determine the displacement. Now, once again, uh, they didn't give you the displacement, they're asking you to find the displacement, but unknown information is still information. Okay, so the very first thing that I want you all to do uh, is, well, one, create the variables chart. XO, XF, VO, VF, a and T. Okay, I'm gonna create that little chart there. All right, uh, and next we're gonna fill in the chart uh, based on the information that we know. We do not know I'm a starting position, but if they don't give it to us, usually it means that it's zero meters um, because that's where we usually measure the start. Uh, the displacement or the, the final displacement, we do not know that the final position but that is something that we are looking for. So I'm gonna put a question mark there um, because that is the, you know, that's the solution to the problem. Initial velocity, we do know. So this is positive 30 meters per second. Uh, final velocity, they did give us that because it came to rest or it came to a stop and that would be zero meters per second. And the acceleration is negative eight meters per second squared. Uh, and I don't believe that they give us the time, so I'm gonna leave that blank. All right, so now that we have our little chart, uh, I'm gonna go to my, my equations here. And once again, this is a strategy that I use, and I hope this is a strategy that you start to use. Now remember that there's no simple way to do this. Uh, the best approach is to just take the step by step, okay? Um, there aren't really shortcuts. So you gotta ask yourself, do I have this variable? Do I have the final velocity? Yes. Do I have the initial velocity? Yes. Do I have the acceleration? Yes, I do. Do I have the time? No, I don't. I do not have the time, and it's not something that I'm looking for, so I cannot use this equation. Do I have the final position? No, but that is something I'm looking for, so I'm gonna put a check mark next to that, because that is given information. Do I have the initial position? Yes. Do I have the initial velocity? Yes. Do I have the time? I do not have the time. Okay, I don't have the times, but I do have the uh, the acceleration. Now, because this has a unknown variable that we're not given, we can't use this equation. All right, do I have the final velocity? Do I have the initial velocity? Do I have the acceleration? Do I have the final position? Do I have the initial position? All right, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Mr. Lee, of course, uh, by process of elimination, the third equation has to be the one that we have to use because the, we can't use the other two. Well, yes, that might be true, but it's still a good habit to go through the process with uh, every single problem, okay? All right, now I'm going to start off by writing out the equation. Now, I do know that a lot of my students, they don't like to do this step. Uh, and trust me when I tell you that this step is very important. It helps us keep things uh, nice and organized and just visually, it, it really works out. Okay, so immediately what a lot of people wanna do is they just wanna plug in all their numbers, but I'm here to tell you, let's not do that just yet, okay? Let's fill in the zeros first. So we know that the initial position is zero, okay? So I'm going to cross that out, or I'm gonna, yeah, cross that out because that's a zero. Okay, uh, and I know my final velocity is a zero. Now the reason why I do this is because that cleans up our equation a lot. We get something that looks like this. And we can clean that up even more to get something that looks like this. Okay, uh, now 
what you want to do next is you want to solve this problem based off of the variables alone. And this is a very good habit because a lot of the times that's where the physics problems come from, you solving for the variables. You're not always given the numbers. Because after you're given the numbers, between you and me, that's just basically just algebra, right? So let's actually solve for the unknown variable xf. I want to isolate xf, the final position. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to subtract v initial squared from both sides. Okay, and then what that gives me is negative v initial squared is equal to, let's cross out the things that cancel out, is equal to 2a xf. Now remember, we still want xf, and so in order to get rid of the 2a that's being multiplied to it, we got to divide both sides by 2a, okay? Because dividing is the uh, the opposite thing of multiplying, and then we are left with negative v initial squared over 2a is equal to x sub f, okay? Now. I personally like to have the unknown variable on the left hand side. I'm just going to swap that around. All right. So that could be our final answer. And a lot of times on the AP exam, you're going to be asked to solve for the unknown variable uh, without any numbers. And so that would be your answer. But because this problem has uh, some numbers involved, let's add the numbers in. Let's do that math. Okay. So I'm going to just move this over a little bit. All right. So given our new equation, we have xf is equal to negative v initial squared all over 2a. Uh, we do not know what xf is. Let's see, our v initial is 30. So that'll be negative, that'll be 30 squared all divided by 2 times negative 8. All right, so 30 squared, that gives us negative 900, divided by uh, 2 times negative 8 gives us negative 16. And we're going to plug that bad boy into the calculator. Let's see, I have my calculator up. And we're going to get uh, negative 900 divided by negative 16. Oops, I did that wrong. We're going to get negative 900 divided by 16. So that gives us uh, 56.25 meters as our final answer. Okay, awesome. Let's do another one. All right, in this part of the video, I'm going to go the kinematic problems in the y-axis. When objects are falling in the y-axis, there's a couple of special things that are applied, and we're about to go into that. So let's go into the problem. It says, Upton Chuck is riding the giant drop at Great America. If Upton free falls for 2.60 seconds, what will be his final velocity, and how far will he fall? So, like always, I'm going to highlight the important pieces of information. So we know that we are going to be falling for 2.60 seconds. We're looking for the final velocity and how far he falls. So that's the, uh, the displacement. Okay. Um, now, there's a couple of things that is like read between the lines kind of thing. Uh, one, we are riding a ride. And in this ride, let me do a quick little sketch. Uh, let's have this the top of the ride. Right? With these types of roller coaster rides, what happens is you are seated, you are seated in like this little carriage and uh, you are brought all the way to the top and when you are at the top, you are dropped and you just fall to your death and you get a big thrill to it and you ride it over and over again. It's a, it's a great time. Okay, So that's, that's my best uh, giant drop of Great America uh, sketch. Uh, yours is probably better than mine, but here is mine, and I like it. So uh, I'm going to label all the important pieces of information. So the first one is that we know that this ride falls for 2.60 seconds. Okay, um, We don't know what the uh, final velocity is. So I'll write final velocity is equal to question mark. Uh, we don't know how far they fall, so we will write how far they fall. Oops, question mark. 
Um, but there is a couple of pieces of information that you have to know uh, when it comes to objects that are dropping. The first is that when you drop objects, uh, you gotta you gotta ask yourself, well, what brings objects to the ground? And a lot of the times, my students go, gravity, gravity brings things to the ground. And yes, well, technically that is true. But instead of saying gravity, uh, we have to say that objects accelerate to the to the ground uh, thanks to gravity, right? And we write that as a sub g acceleration due to gravity. Now sometimes you might see this written as just g. But know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I do want you to get into the habit of calling it acceleration due to gravity uh, because there are things like the force of gravity, which we will cover later. And so just saying gravity isn't enough. So the acceleration due to gravity accelerates the object to the ground. Uh, and when you drop objects, okay, when you drop objects for a brief moment of time, that object does not move when you first drop the object okay it's just hovering there that's a cool little thing so like when you jump up for a brief moment of time at the very very tippity top you're frozen now i'm going to highlight that because that's a very important piece of information i'm going to start at because it's very very important there okay all right now we're going to create the table vo vf oops I kind of messed up there, didn't I? Now we're going to create the table XO, XF, VO, VF, A, and T. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make my chart lines like so. Uh, my acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My time is 2.60 seconds. My final velocity, oh, we're looking for that one. My initial velocity will be 0 meters per second because remember, when you drop objects at the very top, the object is considered to be motionless. Uh, my initial position, oh, they didn't give us that, right? So I'm just going to call that my... Well, we don't know that, but we do know, let's say we end at position zero, right? We reach the floor. So I'm going to write that as zero, but we don't know our initial position. And we're looking for that because we're seeing how far they fell. So my total displacement. Okay, uh, well, let's solve this. So I'm going to go over to my equations. Now, remember, this is a strategy that I do suggest that you use because I use it as well. Um, are we, do we have final velocity? Well, we don't have the number, but we are looking for it, so that's given information. Do we have the initial velocity? Yep. Do we have the acceleration? Yep. Do we have the time? Yes. All right, so I'm going to use the first equation to find final velocity. Now, I do recommend that you always write out the equation in its original form before putting in the numbers. Step two is to put in the zeros. So we have VF is equal to 0 plus AT. VF is equal to AT. Now, uh, you need to rearrange the variable so that it's in the form of the, the variable that you're looking for. So we are looking for VF. Uh, luckily for us, it's already written in that form. And now, now we can plug in our numbers. So we can say VF is equal to negative 9.8 times 2.6. Okay, and we're going to plug that into the calculator and see. Let's clear that. Uh, we got negative 9.8, let's make that negative, uh, times 2.6, and that gives us negative 25.48 meters per second. Now remember that negative simply means that this object is moving to the ground, or it's moving downwards. Okay, so I'm going to write that down, <laughs> get it, uh, so that it's a good reminder, all right? Next, we want to know exactly how far this person fell. So uh, I'm going to go over to my equations here. Now I already marked it off. Uh, this is the equation that we're going to need. So I'm going to start off by writing out the equation without any variables. x is equal to xo plus v initial times the time plus 1 half acceleration time squared. Uh, it's a good habit to do that. Next, I'm going to put in the zeros where they belong just to clean things up a bit 
zero times the time plus one half a t squared. Okay, uh, zero times time that just gives us zero. So I'm gonna cross that off. Uh, we get zero is equal to x initial plus one half a t squared. Next, uh, what I want to do is I want to rearrange this so that uh, my unknown variable is by itself. So I'm going to just move uh, this 1 half at squared over on to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. So I will get uh, xl is equal to negative 1 half at squared. All right. And now, finally, uh, that's when I can plug in my my numbers. So I have 1 half times negative 9.8 times the t squared and my time is 2.6 square that. Next I'm going to get my calculator. Okay. I'm going to get my calculator. So we have 2.6 squared. So that's 2.6 times 2.6 times negative 9.8. Okay. Um, and times negative 0.5. And that gives us a final answer of 33.124 meters. So this object fell from a height of 33.124 meters. And that's that. Uh, I will see you next time where we go over a different set of problems. Bye-bye.